Hello, brothers and sisters. I am Ogre Six, and this story is not about this girl. I don't want to tell you her real name, so for purposes of the story, we'll call her Bob. Yeah, Bob. I like that. We knew each other when we were very young, and we fell in love in the way that only the very young can manage. That is to say, recklessly and ludicrously and perfectly. Things like that aren't meant to last forever, and this one didn't. Crushed, I think, would be a fair description of how I felt about that. But I was young and resilient and full of romance and hormones, and so I did not embark upon a career of celibacy. She was followed by a string of lovers. Because I was a romantic, and also because I had a complete inability to learn from my mistakes, and a bad habit of rushing in where angels fear to tread, each one of those people was the love of my life, while they were around. But once they were gone, I always went back in my heart to Bob. Instead of mourning the most recent love lost, I would mourn her loss afresh. I don't know why I did that. It makes no sense to do that. But I did. And so, over time, a strange thing happened. The Bob in my memory began to take on the notable characteristics of all these other lovers. The things that had drawn me to them, and the things that had driven me away. She grew in my mind into this sort of personification of love, this transcendent mess of archetypes and contradictions. The real woman that I had loved so much had somehow been lost and replaced by this superhuman image. I still called it Bob, and it wore her face, but it was not her or anyone else. It was entirely a product of my imagination. As a young man, I was a songwriter, and not a bad one, if you'll forgive me saying so. I was very politically active, and so many of my songs were political, but the ones that weren't were all inspired by Bob. Now understand what I mean by that. She did not write them or ask me to write them. She didn't tell me what they should say or sound like. She wasn't even aware, for the most part, that I'd written them. If she'd heard them, she would have failed to recognize herself in them. And if I told her they were about her, she would probably have been angry. I'd attributed all sorts of qualities to her that she did not possess. These songs weren't about the real Bob. They were about the grotesque and gloriously inaccurate vision of her in my head. They came from the anger and wistfulness that was inspired by this larger-than-life thing that was both far better and far worse than any human could ever be. Christians frequently say that their book was inspired by God. When they say this, we tend to roll our eyes and laugh at them. Maybe we shouldn't do that. The statement is, in fact, literally true. The problem is that Christians usually aren't speaking literally when they say it. They seem to have lost sight of what inspired by actually means. It doesn't mean written by or dictated by. It doesn't mean commissioned or endorsed by. It certainly doesn't mean accuracy guaranteed by or moral authority conferred by. It just means that the authors wrote from the love and fear and reverence that were inspired in them by the image in their minds that they called God. The Bible was inspired by God in the exact same way and to the exact same extent that my songs were inspired by Bob. That is not meaningless. It gives them a certain power and earnestness and depth of feeling. It makes them genuine and even honest in a profound way. But it doesn't make them true. It doesn't mean that listening to them will give you an accurate picture of Bob. It doesn't even prove that she ever existed. In fact, the Bob that inspired those songs never really did. 